everyone, welcome to another edition of Harona and I am Harona Drame. Today I'm delighted to welcome one of my young brothers who's doing great around this country and we couldn't be prouder of him. Dr. Ismaila Dembobaji is my guest today. Dr. Ismaila, welcome to the show. Welcome. Thanks for having me. It's an honor to be here. I definitely appreciate being here. I, I remember you uh, uh, many years ago now, let me say many, yes. that way you don't sound too young. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but let's, let's retrace those days growing up in yeah. the kind of things, yeah. etc. Definitely. Uh, so my childhood um, in the Gambia has been very fond um, because it was interesting because I actually left Gambia very early. Um, so I left when I was an infant. Our family moved to Belgium um, and then to New York, um, and we were in New York for a while. But then, early 90s, we came back, mm -hmm. and that's honestly when we started in, you know, integrated into the Gambian society. That's when I went to Mrs. Nels, uh, mm -hmm. left Mrs. Nels, went to Gambia High. Um, so I have a very rich experience because I got to learn about the country at an age that I maybe appreciate it more now than versus being born here and just staying here throughout the time. But Definitely. Um, Gambia High, obviously, I didn't go to St. Augustine's. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you went to girls' high school, uh, yeah. okay? <laughs> but Gambia High gave me a rich experience. Uh, I think Mrs. Ndaus, for example, just being part of the Mrs. Ndaus culture from an education standpoint added a lot of value to my childhood. And then Gambia High gave me a different perspective of integrating into a public school system as well to different experiences. Um, served as head boy at Gambia High in 2003. Mm -hmm. So just a lot of good experiences that made me who I am today because it made me appreciate and see different levels of the Gambian community. So you were kind of uh, grew up in that leadership role, yeah. becoming head boy. Yeah. How does that make you feel at that point? Does it make you feel really responsible and uh, getting prepped up for actual leadership? It, it did. Um, it did. I was very involved in high school, both in sports and in leadership as well, too, because sports also is an avenue for leadership. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the Gambian way, my parents cared more about actual leadership mm -hmm. than sports, but it got me prepared because I learned how to communicate very well. Mm -hmm. I learned how to represent um, a whole student body, being mm -hmm. able to carry myself with a certain level of standard, knowing that I was always being watched, um, being able to interact. Um, at that point, we had you know, there was a National Students, uh, Patriotic Students Association where head boys and head girls interacted with each other. Mm -hmm. It just gave me a lot of opportunities, especially now that I could look back on that experience. It gave me valuable lessons on just leadership that I still use to this day. Yeah. Medicine. Why medicine? Why not law? Why not journalism? <laughs> why, why not... Uh a businessman, why not banking, why not anything else? Yeah, so it's interesting because I come from a family of five mm -hmm. and I'm the only one who went into the healthcare field. Mm -hmm. But the funny thing is I actually left Gambia High to go to the States as an engineering student. Mm -hmm. And I did engineering for two weeks and changed course. Two weeks? Two weeks. Um, I, I still don't know why it happened, but I think things happened for a reason. So I changed my major to chemistry because I knew that I wanted to learn something that when I came back, it could be tangible things. So the thing I tell people is when I was leaving, I always knew there was a return there. I didn't know when that return was going to be, but it just medicine, especially a pharmacy example, it gave me an opportunity to get some skill sets that now I could bring back home. And to me, it just I had a human element to it. Because mm -hmm. at that age, I didn't understand a lot of things like how diseases are affecting people. Sometimes our relatives, we don't get to know them as much because they're not living as long. Um, so the more I looked into the medical field, it just became natural uh, for me to pursue that. Plus, I was a science student, so chemistry and things like that made it easy. Um, but definitely, it, I'm glad that was the right decision I made. Engineering could have done wonders. I mean, look at <laughs> now and everything we are going through now. Imagine if a Gambian would come with some kind of solution right. to the electrical crisis in this country. That would have been phenomenal. It, it would be huge. But what I tell people is every profession needs, or every professional has to be healthy mm -hmm. to do what they need to do. And the Gambian health situation right now, one, Gambians are not living longer. So the average Gambian man, for example, is living to only be 63 years old. Mm -hmm. Compared to a man in the U.S., they're living 14 years longer than Gambian men. Mm -hmm. So even being 34, I've technically lived half my life 
already as a Gambian man, and the health has a lot to do with that. So a healthy nation is a wealthy nation. Um, so if I could create as many healthy engineers as possible, mm -hmm. I think the nation benefits at, as a whole, irrespective as well. Let's go back to those formative years yeah. in college, mm -hmm. university, mm -hmm. and now chemistry, mm -hmm. which is not a popular subject, yeah. I'll tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, how do you, because I, I don't think a lot of Gambians up for those. I mean, a lot yeah. of us will do the regulars, right. you know, political science, science yeah. and uh, uh, MBAs, yeah. management, yeah. Um, human resource yeah. trainings. Mm -hmm. Those are the subjects that you, we find a lot of companies. Yeah, and I think there's still value in the humanities. Um, mm -hmm. But one thing science, technology, engineering, and math does is I think it's a foundation that nations could build themselves because mm -hmm. you can't exist without it. Um, and I think for me, college, interesting thing is I actually went to a historical black university in the U.S. for my undergraduate studies. Which is? Uh, Tennessee State, so in Nashville, mm -hmm. which gave me a totally different experience being on a campus that was 95% black people. Mm -hmm. um, so the experience of our African-American brothers, I pledged a fraternity while I was an undergrad, um, assumed leadership roles, which stems back to my high school days as well too. Uh, but left there and went to a PWI, which is a you know, majority white institution at Purdue, where I did my doctor of pharmacy. So that also gave me a different perspective, where now you're 2% black people on a, uh, on a campus. So college still just also gave me a reminder of one, who I was. Mm -hmm. So I tell people my identity, I started finding it while I was away from the Gambia, because I actually realized how much about myself I did not know from a Gambian context, mm -hmm. but being in an environment in the U.S. where I've lived in the U.S. half of my life, Gambia started drawing me back. Even if it's subconsciously, it started there. And I think it started in college because I started to realize, one, there's huge disparities. Like, why don't we have certain nice things too in the Gambia? Mm -hmm. We like nice things, we deserve nice things. But how could I start building a foundation in the U.S. Mm -hmm. for when I do go back, I go back with something that could be on the same level, if not better as the life that was in the U.S. because I think the immigrant experience sometimes could be misleading. Um, Gambia has always been more comfortable for me. Um, it's safer. The opportunities are greater because the immigrant experience in the U.S. it's not as friendly. That American dream wasn't built for immigrants. Um, and I think I started to get to that realization to realize that life could be better elsewhere. So that had a lot to do with why I made that decision to come back home. Why I made the decision to come back home. We'll mm -hmm. take our first break here. When we come back, more with Dr. Ismaila Dembo Baji. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back. Yeah. The journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. At Unique Group, we pride ourselves with 20 years of exemplary leadership, experience and service delivery allow us to take you into the future. Enjoy high-speed internet connectivity at affordable prices, whether at the office, school, or at home. We've got you covered anywhere in the country. Your safety is our primary concern. Have us install state-of-the-art HD surveillance cameras and security devices. Monitor and manage your vehicle's movement with accuracy using our GPS tracking solutions designed to meet your organizational and personal needs. Let blackouts be a thing of the past. Acquire our solar inverter systems and enjoy clean, unlimited electricity supply all day, 24-7. We are only a phone call away. Reach us on 439-0424 or 224-7777. We are Unique Group. Your needs, our business.
Welcome back to Harona and I am Harona Drame. Today my guest is Dr. Ismaila Dembo Baji, an innovator, a leader and a returnee. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, Doctor, we, we go... Um, one of the things that I see a lot of young people coming back home, mm -hmm. a lot of young professionals, mm -hmm. let me say it that way, come back home is the democrat, uh, democratic uh, dividend. Mm -hmm. I mean, people 2016, mm -hmm. the change of government mm -hmm. and the change of structures, mm -hmm. the politics. Mm -hmm. Are you one of those people who came back home to, to through that or did you start earlier than that? No, I think it, it made it easy because um, my journey actually, it, it took five years for us to make it back. So we've been working on this project, trying to bring it to the Gambia since 2014, 2015. So that had remnants of the old regime up until now. I think 2016 gave Gambians hope of what could be, mm -hmm. uh, but I also knew that what could be was gonna be in the hands of the people, mm -hmm. not the hands of our leaders. So meaning everybody had to look each other in the eye and decide, okay, what am I gonna contribute to this new Gambia? not what X leader is gonna to bring to the Gambia. So I think 2016 made it easier because I knew, okay, now's the time. And I think timing had everything to do with it, meaning mm -hmm. I was more experienced. I was coming up to 10 years of experience working in the health field in the US. So I had matured as well too as a professional and now felt like I had the skills to bring it back. Uh, but the changeover definitely influenced it because I think everybody was hopeful and hopefully still hopeful. Uh, but I wasn't coming home with the hopes of the new government making it easy, but more me contributing to na national development in my own little way. When you say this project, what do you mean? What is this project? So Innovarex Global Health, uh, which was the healthcare solutions company that I tell people we had intentions for Africa. Uh, me being Gambia made it easy for us Gambia to be franchise number one. Um, but the healthcare solutions company where we studied the market for five years to see, okay, where are the gaps in healthcare? It could be access, it could be technology, it could be quality medications. So we actually didn't build a company to do one thing. We built a solutions company where now we could, we've studied the US system, being part of the health system. We know what it's good at, what opportunities they are. Africa and Gambia represented a blank canvas where we could draw or build anything that we wanted our people to deserve. So that's what Innovarex Global Health became. So IGH, we brought it with the intentions of one, leveraging technology, but more than anything else, leveling the playing field in access to care, which goes back to we deserve better, but we have to create better and we have to be better to have better. So um, that's what we saw in the healthcare industry, especially because going back to what I said, non-communicable diseases, for example, diabetes, hypertension, high cholesterol. There's not a single Gambian that I know who isn't affected by it. It's killing more Gambians than malaria, for example, because the government give them credit. They've done tremendous jobs with communicable diseases like malaria, but diabetes and hypertension and high cholesterol is actually where we came and wanted to spend a lot of our resources and energy on just to see how we could improve the situation of the health. So that's what Innovarex Global Health was. It had a very nationalistic element to it, what mm -hmm. I tell people, because it's rooted in also quality shouldn't be foreign, because Gambia has so much talent in healthcare, engineering, technology. So if we could come and show people like, hey, we could create things of value of quality that is for us, by us, that's where we start making changes in our country. So I, I totally believe in that. How, how does it get implemented? Do you go to meet people? How do you make sure access is created? Because yeah, so that's one I of think, the things. and that, that I'm not unique to just doing new business. A lot of innovators in the Gambia face the challenges of our bureaucracy. Some people will tell you it's too sticky. Uh, most of the times we actually don't need help, we just need a pathway. Mm -hmm. to be able to do certain things. But the implementation, I think technology, especially for our company, uh, so we invested a lot on technology um, where it closed the gap in access. So now, for example, a patient who lives in Basse, using technology, their doctor could be in Atlanta, mm -hmm. right? Medications that are in New York could be delivered to somebody in Mansaconco, right? Mm -hmm. So technology makes it easy. Um, and also using the diaspora as our strongest power bringing them part of the process where now we include them in how their loved ones are being taken care of in the Gambia. 
because they recognize the quality. So services that normally somebody had to go to Dakar to do a kidney function test. Mm -hmm. Now you could come to our facility and you get it done in 12 minutes. So it literally changes, it's the future of healthcare. Uh, even in terms of electronic health records, for example, being bold enough to say that we have a vision of a Gambia where the whole system is on one electronic health record system. So meaning your blood group, if you go to Serakunda Hospital, but five days later you're at Birkama, the moment you show up using electronic health record systems, they see, so they have information to take care of you better. That's where the company is going um, in terms of technology, and I think it makes it easier to do it. Well, would you not say... Uh the health ministry, we're going to be controversial for a minute, the health ministry should have had some sort of a registry that can be accessed, uh, accessible yeah. by all healthcare providers, yeah. including even the police, yeah. Yeah. to be able to roadside accidents, etc., to be able to determine, oh, who is this yeah. person? It's Harona. Okay, Harona, pop, 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 and then you get info. Yeah. So you know what uh, blood type a person mm -hmm. is. Basic medical information. Absolutely. You do not think it's about time it is. that we get some sort of a grid of this in Gambia? It is. Um, we have to go digital because it's the future of healthcare. It should be as easy as like your medical record number being on your driver's license. Yes. Where even if you're unconscious, yes. they could know, that, okay, he's hypertensive, yes. he's, he's old blood group. Um, so that's the point of one of the technologies that we're actually bringing is to bring electronic health records for the nation. Um, and collaborators, we definitely are looking to engage the ministry on that because I think it, it's where we need to go. And it's unique because Gambia, we're barely two million people. Mm -hmm. So projects like this, if the dedication is there, you could implement it within a year where the whole Gambia is on an electronic health record system. Um, and the police force, the, the wave of the future is definitely has to go digital. Um, it can't be 2019 where there's paper records to get your birth certificate. Right, so we have to move past that. So I'm hoping, um, and they've engaged us as well too. So we're definitely that's one of the solutions that we're bringing um, to the Gambia is electronic health record systems to standardize it. We'll take our second break here. When we come back, final words with Dr. Ismaila Dembo Baji. We'll be right back. The journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. At Unique Group, we pride ourselves with 20 years of exemplary leadership, experience and service delivery. Allow us to take you into the future. Enjoy high-speed internet connectivity at affordable prices. Whether at the office, school or at home, we've got you covered anywhere in the country. Your safety is our primary concern. Have us install state-of-the-art HD surveillance cameras and security devices. Monitor and manage your vehicle's movement with accuracy using our GPS tracking solutions designed to meet your organizational and personal needs. Let blackouts be a thing of the past. Acquire our solar inverter systems and enjoy clean, unlimited electricity supply all day, 24-7. We are only a phone call away. Reach us on 439-0424 or 224-7777. We are Unique Group. Your needs, our business. Welcome back to Harona with my special guest, Dr. Ismail Dembo Baji. We're back, Dr. Baji. Now, uh, this is the last segment of the show, of course. Um, 2016 provided certain dividends. Mm -hmm. List of priorities for the government is security sector reform, mm -hmm. is uh, truth and reconciliation, is blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. But we don't see a structured, organized approach mm -hmm to healthcare solutions. Mm. Would you not say it's about time 
we look into health care and make it a major priority as we would education and other sectors? Yeah, it has to be. Um, I think with any nation, especially the African nations who are developing education, agriculture, healthcare, technology as well too, if we're not intentional about planning for the future, we're almost setting up to fail. Um, and in terms of healthcare, I think that's one of the things where it is overdue, but also the government is overburdened, uh, which is why I think um, they need to be more inviting to people like us coming home and making it easier to help them as well too, because every health system in the Gambia is overburdened, under-resourced. The doctors are doing what they can with the information. But signs like, okay, a national health insurance scheme, those are hopeful, uh, but those things can't happen without centralizing the health system with electronic health records, where they have databases. Uh, so the reform is overdue, um, but I think you know, you, leveraging the private sector, leveraging Gambian professionals who, who are in the health field, both locally and internationally, has to be the way for it. So we have to move from a competitive space to a more collaborative space if we want to make some changes. But healthcare is an absolute necessity because too many Gambians are dying from preventable deaths. And if you look at the allocation of resources, you wonder where our priorities are sometimes when you know certain things are missing in the Gambia. Like, certain infrastructures that anywhere in the world is non-negotiable. It has to happen. Um, but I think the more doctors collaborate, we'll make our voices heard more. Uh, but there's definitely a need for it because the Gambians are not living longer. You know? I'm, I'm just wondering, is there some sort of an organization, association mm -hmm. of all of you private practitioners mm -hmm. from pharmacies to private clinics mm -hmm. and private hospitals mm -hmm. and uh, healthcare facility provided. Mm -hmm. That way, mm -hmm. there's an organized grouping of people mm -hmm. where whatever would happen would be a standard mm -hmm. across all. Yeah, right. Th this is what you need if yeah. central government is chaotic in providing it. Mm -hmm. The private sector should be able to mm -hmm. come together, mm -hmm. galvanize efforts, mm -hmm. and then be able to yeah. address these yeah. issues, no? Yeah, and I think I'm sure they are. Some of them I may not even be aware of because I'm still returning and integrating back into the system. I could tell you as a company, what we decided to do is actually form a doctor's network. So all the local doctors around town, organizations, clinics, we're actually reaching out to them to one, see how could we collaborate? Mm -hmm. How could we be on the same page? We're now using technology with electronic health records. How could you be at a different clinic and have access to somebody's hemoglobin test that I'm doing at my facility? So that's one of the things where we didn't want to wait to see what's there but we came in with intentions of reaching out to all the local doctors and building a network to find solutions together. Because I think that's when we can actually support the government better when we're speaking as one voice, a Gambian voice, which I think is extremely important in the health field for like the Gambian health professional community to start speaking collectively as one voice to make sure we're helping push policies that are favorable to Gambians and also provide Gambian you know, businesses an opportunity to compete because then the Gambian dollar stays within the community longer, which from an economic standpoint, we don't realize where the Gambian dollar leaves Gambia very fast. Um, but if it's not Gambians controlling a lot of the services, it puts us at a disadvantage economically as well, too. In the last two years, cancer has been mm -hmm. on the radar. Mm -hmm. A lot of exposure has mm -hmm. been done, a lot of works mm -hmm. and fundraisings, mm -hmm. etc. Mm -hmm. And uh, I do understand there is not a single mammogram in the Gambia. Uh, as at a few months ago uh, when those fundraisings were taking mm -hmm. place. Is, is this an other mm -hmm. uh, commonplace diseases in Gambia under your radar to look at and uh, yeah. address even if it's going to be a collective effort? I, I, I think definitely because as a healthcare solutions company for cancer for example, our initial efforts could be in terms of making sure we open up access to medications chemotherapy medications for cancer patients because mm -hmm. we know we have a, a channel with the US where distribution is easier so even if it's providing quality medications for cancer patients we know we could do that uh, but we also want to not do too many things at the same time so when we looked at the landscape we saw that non-communicable diseases diabetes hypertension high cholesterol is where we wanted to start because it's killing Gambians at a more alarming rate but nonetheless, a lot of our other services, we have the technology, technology, we have the distribution. We could work with people who are 
dedicated to other diseases, maybe even if it's on, we want to make sure there's no counterfeit medications in the country because there's a significant amount of that as well too. Um, so there's definitely ways to align, but the first couple of years, we want to focus a lot on non-communicable diseases, which is why even our social corporate responsibility, we're now offering diabetes and hypertension screenings free of charge, um, just so that Gambians could know what their numbers are. So those are some of the things to, to push the industry where we don't think healthcare should be a privilege, it should be a right. So as a company, we wanted to start with providing access from Banjul to Basset to people to find out what's going on from their health status. From your research and review of mm -hmm. data so mm -hmm. far, mm -hmm. why do you think these three mm -hmm. are major killers in Gambia and or uh, health issues? Um, so a health system is not, it's not a preventative model. It's a cure model, meaning most of the times people go to the doctor when it's too late. Mm -hmm. So as a diabetic, if you're not having access to get your blood sugar checked for free, what, by the time you find out you're diabetic, it could be too late. So now you're going towards amputation. You're going towards kidney failure, all right? So the health system should focus on preventative measures where every single Gambian finds out every single year if they're at risk for diabetes or hypertension. Genetically, we're already at risk for these diseases. So a lot of people- Why, why is that? Hypertension is, has a genetic trait to it. Um, it runs in my family. Um, I'm actually hypertensive, even though I'm young, I'm fit. Um, so the awareness too, creating awareness to realize that, okay, diabetes is prevalent. These are some of the things Gambian should exercise more. The rice is not the best diet option for people who have di diabetes. So the awareness has a lot to do with it, but I think we need to move towards prevention versus care, because it's actually cheaper economically for the health system as well too to make preventative services easier to access, uh, which is why I model, we built it where we go to the patients instead of waiting for them to come to us. Uh, but the prevention model has to be the way to go. And what basic advice would you have? Um, every gambian should know what their number is, which is why our slogan for our campaign is, what's your number? Meaning, when was the last time you knew what your blood pressure number is? When Personally, the, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll fix that because uh, we'll, we do. You have to start by being aware. You cannot fix a problem that you're not aware of. And healthcare is one of the things where we take it for granted. There's a, especially even if it's men, women are more proactive because most of the times they interact with health systems more often. But it starts with making a commitment to yourself and realizing that you have to be part of the solution in terms of knowing what's going on in your body. So getting checked up regularly. If cost is an issue, now we're bringing ways where cost is not an issue. Uh, but it starts with knowing, getting checked, getting screened, and just listening to more advice where there's a balance too between modern medicine and traditional medicine as well too. Dr. Ismaila will give you the last words. Um, I think um, I'm hopeful. Um, what I tell people is our company, yes, is a healthcare company, but I think it's hopefully gonna be a model for every single person in the diaspora who is qualified to start thinking about coming home, because I don't think there's gonna be a leader that's gonna solve our problem in the Gambia. I think, I don't believe in leadership changing nations. People change nations. So if we want better, because we deserve better, we have to be better. Um, so we definitely wanna be a model of being the change that we wanna see in the health system. And what I always tell people is, don't praise us. Pray for us, one, but provide a pathway for us to do what we intend to do for our own people. I think that's when the Gambia across all sectors will start improving, but health has to be a foundation um, that we start with. And then our company definitely wants to be part of the future of healthcare, because I think it has an opportunity to do that for the people, by the people. Thank you, Dr. Ismaila. It's been a pleasure sharing a platform with you and wishing you all the best. Thank you, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thanks.